Hello everyone. Today we learn about boundary value analysis technique of black box testing. If you are a software tester or planning to crack software testing interviews, then you must know about boundary value analysis technique. It is one of the most frequently asked interview questions as well. And if you can answer this one correctly, it will make a good impression. So let's get started. Boundary value analysis, also known as BVA, is a testing technique where we focus on boundaries while creating test cases. Now, what do we mean by boundaries? Often, we encounter a functional requirement where the functionality should work within a specific range. For example, let's say that we are testing an e-commerce site and there's a feature where a particular product, we can say ABC, can only be sold in quantities ranging from 5 to 15. So a user cannot order this product with a quantity less than 5 or more than 15. The allowed quantity for this product is strictly between 5 and 15. This range defines our boundaries. In boundary value testing, we focus on these limits, the minimum and the maximum values of the range. While designing test cases for this functionality, we ensure the following. First, if the user tries to place an order with a quantity less than 5, the order should be rejected. Second, if the user tries to place an order with a minimum boundary value 5, it should be accepted. Third, if the user tries to place an order with a value just above the minimum boundary, which is 6, the order should be allowed. Similarly, near the upper boundary, if the user tries to place an order with a quantity of 14, that is 1 less than the upper boundary, the order should be accepted. Next, we will test the upper boundary. If the user tries to place an order with a quantity of 15, the order should be accepted. Finally, if the user tries to place an order with a quantity above the maximum boundary like 16 or 17, the order should be rejected. Through this approach, we create six key test cases. First, an order with one unit below the lower boundary should be rejected. Second, the order at the lower boundary should be accepted. Third, an order with one unit more than the lower boundary should be accepted. Fourth, an order with one unit less than the upper boundary should be accepted. Five, an order with the upper boundary should be accepted. Six, an order with one unit above the upper boundary should be rejected. This way, we thoroughly test the boundary values of this functionality, which is known as the boundary value analysis. But why boundary value analysis is important? Boundary value analysis is important because most often bugs tend to hide near these boundary points. Testing every possible scenario would be too time consuming. For instance, Testing every quantity between 5 and 15 would be impractical if the upper limit is larger value like 100 or 1000. By focusing on boundaries, we optimize our testing process, quickly identifying potential issues by targeting the most likely troubling issues or steps. Now, I hope it is clear what boundary value analysis is. Now, the next question is, how do we identify where to use boundary value analysis? Before performing boundary value analysis, it's essential to first identify which functionalities benefit the most from this testing technique. To identify this, check for functionalities with defined ranges. Look for features where inputs or outputs are restricted to specific ranges like age limits, quantity restrictions or time intervals, etc. If a requirement specifies a start and an end point, it is a good candidate for boundary testing. For example, loan interest calculations 
or tax rate boundaries are ideal for boundary analysis. In another example, on an e-commerce site, a discount might only apply if the total purchase amount is between 3000 and 5000. This range means the lower boundary is 3000 rupees and the upper boundary is 5000 rupees. So we should use the boundary value analysis to test orders right at 3000, 5000 and just above or below these values to ensure that the discount applies or doesn't as expected. Using this approach, we can easily identify scenarios where we can use boundary value analysis for designing the test cases. Another commonly asked question is, while designing test cases, can boundary value analysis be used with non-numeric fields? Well, in most cases, boundary value analysis applies to the numeric fields, but it's possible to have non-numeric fields with range limits. For example, the number of characters in a username can be within a range, like from 5 to 20. A username should be in this range only, and it fits perfectly for boundary value analysis. Now, what are the common mistakes to avoid when using the boundary value analysis? While boundary value analysis is effective, there are a few common mistakes to avoid. First, Skipping the boundary check. Sometimes testers skip testing the exact boundary values. For example, if the range is 5 to 15, they may focus only on the values just outside the boundaries like 4 and 16. This can miss issues that occur precisely at the limits like 5 or 15. Second, overlooking negative or unusual values. While testing within the boundary, don't forget to check unusual values outside it like negative numbers or non-standard inputs. These might trigger unexpected errors if not handled properly by the system. Third, testing too many in-between values. Boundary testing focuses on edges, so it's not necessary to test every single value within the range. For example, if the boundary values are 5 and 15, testing each value between 5 and 15 is a waste of time and doesn't add much value. Stick to the boundary points to keep testing efficient. Fourth, ignoring local boundaries. Boundaries aren't always numerical. They can be logical limits too. For example, a form that limits input length to 100 characters also has boundaries that should be tested. Don't limit your testing just to numeric ranges. Other limits matter as well. Fifth, not reassessing when requirement changes. As requirements evolve, boundaries may shift. Example, changing the range from 5 to 15 to 10 to 20. In short, test cases are updated accordingly, as outdated boundaries could introduce new bugs. If used properly, boundary value analysis can be a powerful tool for efficiently catching the edge case bugs. And that's it for this video. I hope you now have a solid understanding of boundary value analysis in software testing. Try applying this technique the next time you're testing boundary related scenarios and you'll see just how valuable it can be. Thanks for watching and bye for now.